it's, it's the most tragic thing because again generations have believed this bullshit given off 10 percent of their money their kids futures and free labor it's slavery joseph smith the polygamy the kurt lane and nabu polygamy essay this place discusses very disturbing information about joseph smith how he married 14 year old girl and other men's wives there are serious problems with church history can you imagine that being someone in a position of power like that marrying a 14 year old and then taking her virginity can you imagine what that would be like for that 14 year old and i am extremely disturbed by how i was treated this year by you president extremely disturbed we had an agreement on march 15th to meet and in in february you came out uh, you came then you came out to me and said we're going to hold a council on you on Valentine's Day. I said, wait a minute. I never changed the agreement. March 15th. Why are you changing it? It was, it was really weird, this real sense of urgency that you had all of a sudden. You disappeared for a year, then all of a sudden you have a sense of urgency. On the phone call, when I said March 15th, you said, I can't wait that long. Is that guy's taking orders. Salt Lake involved in this? Yes, but if things go wrong in the public eye, they don't want the top leadership blamed. So they're having the stake president do it, because if it does go wrong, they'll just blame him. He'll be the fall guy. And he doesn't even realize it yet. He shouldn't want, certainly wouldn't want to admit that to himself, that he's being used as a risky pawn, an expendable one. Okay, you're not going to answer that? So... So you try to hold a Valentine's Day disciplinary council on me without talking to me, without giving me any errors or mistakes to, cor to correct. And lo and behold, the next very next day, five, five o'clock in the morning, you email me saying that the disciplinary council will, was council for Valentine's Day. So you schedule it for March 20th. And you said that March 15th meeting was still on. And so February 28th, you emailed me again, and you asked if I was still going to meet on March 15th. I said, nothing changed. I'll still meet with you. By the way, I'm going to bring my ASL interpreter to ensure that I understand the meeting. And you had a problem with the interpreter. You did not want an interpreter present. So you canceled the March 15th meeting, and you also canceled the March 20th meeting, and you took our conversation into writing. And I was gracious, I was grateful for that. So I wanted to start a conversation with you. But you, you placed restrictions on it. You, for some reason, you wanted to take it into the dark, into non-transparency. And in our November 2nd meeting, when you offered to help me with answers, there were no conditions placed on that. But all of a sudden, there's all these conditions that we have to talk in the dark and all that. Notice any similarities? <laughs> They hate transparency. It leads to accountability. It leads to a loss in membership rates. And in political realms, that means revolution. And I was trying to understand why you were placing these conditions. What was your reasoning for it? I believe that individuals and investigators and members, members of the church, need all of the information on the table to make a fully informed decision. As informed decision. We'd like to make informed decisions. Sound familiar? It's the same template. To whether or not they want to commit their hearts, minds, lives, and money to Mormonism. Or to the government. It's important. Because if not all the information is on the table, if an organization or an individual takes some information off the table, like evidence of jurisdiction cool information they are literally obstructing the free agency of their member otherwise known as freedom human rights and dignity investigator by hiding and withholding important information from members and investigators you are literally obstructing the free agency of members of the church while also denying them any presumption of innocence whatsoever. What a joke of a phrase. It has no basis in actual reality. And I have a problem with that. I would too. The reality is, is that church history is absolutely messy. 
the reality is. He's talking actual reality. It's messy. That's an understatement. And it's not pretty down there. No pun intended. And they're, they're just problems. We, we're in reality of the information age. You got that right. I was hoping for a dialogue tonight. I was hoping to be able to ask my questions and get answers. But it's obvious that I'm not going to get anything tonight. That this is not a real trial. It's not a real... Like, as far as I'm concerned, this is a kangaroo court. Kangaroo court. Kangaroo court. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, you guys are not interested in helping me. How many minutes do I have left? 30. 30 minutes? I mean, brethren, I don't... I don't know how to repent of the truth. The real problem here is not whether or not I'm spreading falsehoods or lies. I've never been accused of that. It's that I'm public about this information. You're effective. That's what being public is. You're public and it's truth and people see it and it resonates with them because they're born with their own logic and ethics. He's effective and that's what they can't stand. So the real, the real problem here is that the church has a problem with freedom of expression. The church claims to believe in free agency, but it doesn't. It, you can keep your thoughts in your head, but the minute that you exercise your freedom of expression, you get thrown into dis disciplinary counsel. It's the same hustle. Oh, free agency, free agency. Jesus was built on free agency. You have your choice, you have your choice. Between heaven and hell. Who would choose hell? What kind of choice is that? That is words only. So the church is not, doesn't believe in free agency. What am I doing here, President? What am I doing here? Good question. What error or mistake have I made? No Please answer. correct me. They have no answer for that. Book of Mormon. What are 1769 King James Version errors doing in the Book of Mormon? Good question. What are 1769 King James Version errors doing in the Book of Mormon? Which was written in the first half of the 19th century. This is from the book of Abraham, as church essay. Neither the rules nor the translations in the grammar book correspond to those recognized by Egyptologists today. Scholars have identified the papyrus fragments as parts of standard funerary texts that were deposited with mummified bodies. This is in the church's translation in his historicity of the book of Abraham essay. So, the papyri that Joseph Smith translated from, quote unquote, translated from, is its standard funerary document. And they expand on it. What is a standard, standard funerary document? These fragments date to between the 3rd century BC and the 1st century CE, long after Abraham lived, 2,000 years after Abraham lived. It is so bad, the evidence is so damning, that the church is trying to sell what is called a catalyst theory. That Joseph Smith did not translate the Book of, Mark, the Book of Abraham, like we were taught growing up, in all the different churches, institutions, CES. Seminary, which is church five days a week for junior high and high school students because they're so horny, they easily go astray. Mutual Sunday school, that he translated it. It's no longer he translated. He just maybe touched the papyrus and he got a revelation where it became the book of Abraham. Poof. But that, but that theory, which is bizarre. It's just a make em ups story to cover their tracks in the information age. And contradictory to the evidence in the journal and the claims of Joseph Smith, it doesn't explain then why, why Joseph Smith's translations of the facsimiles are wrong, that they're incorrect. Both LDS and non-LDS Egyptologists agree that the translations of the facsimiles are wrong. Joseph Smith got them wrong. It creates a new narrative that discredits the story that we were told, dis discredits the claims of Joseph Smith. I just mentioned several of them. The Book of Abraham, Blacks in the Priesthood, there's First Vision Accounts essay. I've done nothing wrong. I've I stand today with my head held high, I'm morally clean, 
and have a clear conscience that I have done nothing wrong. So, because you guys are not answering my questions, and you guys have not answered my questions the last three years, it is very clear to me that the church does not have answers to a truth crisis. The church does not like individuals asking questions about his truth claims. And neither do the courts. So, this is a kangaroo court. I'm done with this court. President, I am as communicating the LDS Church, I am as communicating you, and I am as communicating this kangaroo court for my life. Here is my resignation letter. Goodbye. It's just as simple as that. It's just as simple as that. Goodbye.